Hey everybody, welcome to Ask the Anabolic Doc, starring the Anabolic Doc, Thomas O'Connor, brought to you by his websites, AnabolicDoc.com and MetabolicDoc.com, both of which you can get a copy of America on Steroids, A Time to Heal, also available on Amazon.com. How are you, Dr. O'Connor? Sitting up here in the rain, up here in the rain, as you are across town. Yeah, across town, a couple hours away. And... We're doing good, busy, you know, loving my videos on D-Ball and Trent are freaking just blowing out of the, out of the roofs. I love your videos about D-Ball and Trent so much, I'm totally ripping them off for these videos. That's how good they are. But I try to make, I'm going to try to make this very different so people aren't like, I already watched the doctor's video, it was awesome, but I don't need to watch it again with this knucklehead Ron. So, <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to start off, before we get into like the good and the bad about D-Ball, I'll volunteer my first D-ball experiences. If you want to, or if you don't want to, that's up to you. You know, this is a. I don't know. <laughs> you're, how much you're willing to divulge? You might lose your contract with Nike or something. But, uh, <laughs> D-ball was the first drug I tried to get a hold of ten years before I actually started using steroids. I was only seventeen. It might have been. Was I sixteen? No, I was seventeen. And I was going to a, a kickboxing place, and there was a kid there. So I was like 17. There was a kid there who was like 19. He was jacked, and he had all these zits all over his back and his shoulders. And I'm like, man, because I was working out, and I was not getting very good results. So I was like, oh, wow, what, you know, what do you do? He's like, oh, I, I use steroids. I'm like, oh, shit. I said, can you get me some steroids? He goes, yeah, yeah. What do you want? I go, I don't know. What, what's good? He goes, oh, how about some D-ball? I go, D-ball, Diana Ball. I go, that sounds great. It's a pill. There's no shot. Okay, hook me up. So I think yep. I gave him like a hundred bucks or hundred twenty bucks, you know, like my week's pay at uh, working at Burger King or wherever the hell I was at the time. <laughs> I got a bottle and I started taking it, and nothing happened. I went through the whole I, I, I went through the whole bottle over the course of like a month, and so later I figured out it was like breath mints he had sold me or something. Oh my god! Yeah, there was no seal on the bottle. I shouldn't. You know, I was a moron. I didn't know anybody. So I never touched D ball again. I never. Well, that wasn't real D ball. So yeah. later on. Uh, I was I was getting ready for uh, uh, my thirtieth birthday. I got in the only time I've ever gotten in really good shape for uh, anything that wasn't a contest. I did a couple TV commercials for Valley of Weightlifting Gloves. I did a couple photo shoots for Iron Man magazine. But anyway, the point is that's when I got uh, I had been off gear. Ninety seven was my big year where I started using gear and I was on it most of that year off and on. Then I took off all of ninety eight, most of ninety nine. But then when I decided I was going to get in shape again. I said, oh, I better get some, better get hold of some good steroids because I want to look good for these, uh, these shoots. Oh, God. And uh, there was, I, I wonder if you've heard of this. There was a veterinary form of D-ball that was injectable called Reforvit B. Yeah. Uh, so we had a lot of that going around the LA area where I was from Mexico. Oh. And um, the guy who sold it to me said, you know, you don't even have to inject this. You can just drink it. So it was not meant to be ingested, I don't think. Oh. But I was. Uh, I was taking the syringe, loading it up to whatever, and then squirting in my mouth, and it was disgusting. But, uh, yeah, from then on, off and on, after that, I started incorporating every once in a while D-ball, and I always enjoyed it. I thought it was a good drug. Uh, do you have I mean, D-ball is just like, that's the breakfast of champions. I mean, that was the drug that, we don't want to say the names, but, you know, the old big guys there, Arnie and all these guys. I mean, I mean, they only had a few drugs. It was D-ball, Anivar, right? There was Parabolin, of course, and I'm doing, I'm doing all these videos historically, and I'm reading, so I read all over the place on these things, and I thought I knew stuff, and then I read it, and I, and I put it through my brain of, of what I've heard from thousands of men that have told me as the doc what like their experience is, and I'm putting it all together with a chemical structure and the, the met metabolism in the kidney and the... the and I'm, I'm, as you relearn and relive and you read something, you know, even like Llewellyn's textbook and other places all over the internet, you learn more and more and you put it together. Yeah. So, but with the, with the clinical experiences I have from all the men, like stories like that, it's just, fa it's unreal. It's just unbelievable. And so, you know, I'm sure you gave some historical perspective in your video, but to refresh people's memory, that was the first steroid that was actually developed, uh, what by, in the United States by... Is it Dr. John Ziegler? He was working John Ziegler because we were getting our asses kicked at the Olympics. And John Ziegler, man, John Ziegler. Here's the story, which is it's a great story. 
He was at the 19, oh my God, Ron, 62. He was, it was before I was born. He was at, he, he saw the Russians, it's always the Russians. Yeah. He saw the Russians at the World Games, I assume weightlifting, because he was also a coach of other things too. But the, the, the way he's baked out of that York Barbell Club, that that's that's right. That was basically the U.S. Olympic weightlifting yeah. training center in Pennsylvania. And he was, and, and there was a video. There's a, there's some historic video about that. You know, later on, in probably 20 years ago, and about that. So he was with the Russians somewhere outside America, and the story goes, he saw the Russian athletes having problems peeing, pissing. Because they had androgenic, and they were doing suspension, testosterone suspension injections, Ron. Hmm. They were doing suspension because I don't think we had, and I could be corrected, I don't think we had esters then. Right. I don't yeah. think we had sipinate. One of the next, his, I, as I do the history, I'll be doing uh, testosterone esters next and, and HGH and everything else. I'll do this for a few weeks. And... It's really fun. I can't believe how much people care more about my videos on steroids than my video about heart disease. Wow. But this is just what it is. I'm not fighting the market. Yeah. So, and so, so Ziegler saw these men cat being catheterized in their penis oh. with catheters. But here's the thing: I'm not saying the guy in his deathbed is gonna is a lying, but there's no way it's not possible because Ron, hmm. men to this day do steroids testosterone suspension they do testosterone esters how many young men at bodybuilding competitions or weightlifting competitions or even the local gym in their under the age of 30 are having problems pissing so what was what, none. Right, what was none what was giving these uh, russian athletes such a problem was it so listen 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 so this is why the anabolic this is why i love being the anabolic doc it's because it's medical hmm. so if you look at anabolic androgenic steroids, right, AAS, yeah. there's anabolic, which is muscle building, and then there's androgenic, which are male secondary sex characteristics. Yeah. We're men. We're not the brightest bulbs in the tree. We're, that's why we're men. True. So we, we look like men. We have brows. We have the face. We have the hair, loss of hair, obviously, as we get older and more testosterone, hair loss. Mine, mine's thinning too, yeah, yeah. and and we have male bodies. Our voices are like this, and we're not the smartest creatures, and we have sex. Okay, so those are called androgenic properties. When you're in the womb, you have that differentiate the fetus into a male female DHT. We, who needs it? Then you go quiet. You're a young boy, but you're different than a young girl. And then you go into puberty, and there's nothing more to say. When you when you go through puberty, you're going on your own gear, okay. right? Right. So and that's why you get pimples, and you're getting your voice is changing. And my little, you know, my kid is 13. Listen to this. I heard him talking the other day. I go, that sounds familiar. I go, oh, he sounds like a like a young a, a hot chick on gear. A female bodybuilder, yeah. I, I said, and you said that, and it's comical because, like, he sounds like a chick on gear. Yeah. I, I don't want to tell him that. He'll punch me. <laughs> He'll be coming in any minute. So, it's so Ziegler saw the androgenic effects of testosterone, but I, I wonder maybe one guy was catheterizing and he thought he went back to the drawing board. This is a true story. He supposedly went back to the drawing board with the pharmaceutical companies, he kind of teased out a bunch of companies. He got a contract with them, with their chemists, and he said, let's make a compound that's more anabolic and less androgenic. Wow. Done. And it, and was, then, it was developed specifically. It was going to be a secret thing. They weren't going to put it on the market, right? That's exactly right. Hmm. Wow. That's it. So, so and then within a few years, quickly, it went on to market, and then it, he, over the course of 10 years, became disgusted, disenfranchised, and he quit, he moved, and then he was against steroids, and then D-Ball stayed out, D-Ball, I mean, Diana Ball, I mean, it was the breakfast of champions because it was used, in the beginning, they didn't think it was cheating, it was just like, it makes it really strong and fast and big, and now, no one's gonna use D-Ball if you're, if you're a sprinter, you're gonna use Anavar, then Winstrol, although, and you know it's true. Now, why is that? But because you're ever a sprinter, you don't want puffy bloatiness and water weight bogging you down. I suppose. So it's an estro it's an estrogenic steroid. Yeah. So as I'm doing these histories, Ron, I'm I'm even myself relearning 
the chemical properties that are inherent and why they end up in the streets being used the way they do. So this was developed in the early 60s, so we're looking at over 50 years ago, and it's still very, very popular. So why why would you say that is? What are the, the beneficial properties wow. of Dianabol that make it so well known, so widely loved and used? So it's very, and I, I researched all this and all my right, and I talk, I talk to, you know, I have some, gu, I have my own gurus, right? I take care of gurus yeah. and they know they, when they come into my care, they go, doc, I know you don't like us. We're gurus, <laughs> you know, steroid coaches, because you guys could come under my care. I'm a human. I take care of anyone, but they, they kind of do feel embarrassed because they've been killing people for probably 10 years. <laughs> But giving, they've been telling guys, you know, like, I mean, take Masteron, Taz 600, take, I think a lot of guys, I hope, they're, they're not doctors, they're not going to get sued, they're not going to lose their licenses, but, because they don't have licenses, right. and you know what some of them say to me, you know what, doc, I go, because they come to me and they ask me, doc, I know, I feel, some of them are getting, they're stopping, they're, they're, they're getting away from it, some of the guys are diseased and they're sick and they feel like shit, so they're dying themselves, yeah. and the, the, they, they just feel bad because it's bad. And and you know, I guess if they're Catholic, they're going to go to church, and the, and and the, fa the the priest will relieve them. I mean, Ron, I'm trying to be honest, but you're fucking killing people. But they're not doctors, so guys are getting away from. It. You know what they say to me? Hmm. You know what, Doc? I'm not a doctor. I tell these guys what to do, but uh, shame on them for listening to me. I mean, you know, they're. Uh, I think any. I, I don't agree with the practice, but I mean, it's it's it is what it is. They're, they're a necessary part of the equation now, and athletes, because the drug the drug use has escalated to the point it's the point where it's at now, where guys yeah. are on you know eight to twelve different drugs at a time for a contest. Yeah. Guys don't know. A lot of people don't want to do the research. They don't want to know what do I need to take, how much, when. So they'll pay the, they'll pay these gurus to figure it all out for them. Just map it out. Say okay, here's your cycle yeah. for the next three weeks. Here's a, then change it to this, change it to that. And these people, and the gurus, know, they know and the, nice. You know, the gurus tell, this is a big, the guru, I'm gonna, I'll answer the quote, we always launch off to things, but it, this is relevant content, obviously, for people. Yeah. The gurus, in the beginning, don't feel like they're doing anything wrong be, because they just feel that it's not really dangerous. And then, over time, the gurus that I take care of now, they're in their 40s and 50s, and they realize that it's wrong because they're sick right and, and now so you, to answer your question the gurus tell me have told me when I was doing my research <clears throat> doc D balls a staple bro mm -hmm. D balls cheap as shit and it works like a charm right and that's so for a bulking no one's cutting up with D ball Ron that's yeah. stupid you know that but D ball is a relevant poor part of a, a, a someone who wants forget bodybuilders power someone who wants to get big and strong and bulking yeah. it, it's your bulking drug of choice is dianabol yeah. and like i said so many people have a fear of needles or an issue with needles so that's why pro hormones are still being used as widely as they are and that's why d-ball it never went out of style it never will go out of style it's cheap and a lot i know so many people who've done d-ball only cycles because they feel that's safer because there's no needle you know little right. really enough. And that's what I talked about. I said, you know, so that's in the beginning of my summary. I said, Jesus Christ, this is such a such a horrible thing. So many people, not in America, the guys outside, American steroid users, at least historically, yeah. have been kind of smart enough, if I could say that, to realize they don't do orals. That, that they, they always knew. Remember back in the 80s, Ron, the 90s? Yeah. Guys would be in the bar, the bouncers, and they would be they would drink water. Right. Be, because they, I was amazed up at Syracuse, upstate New York, me and the bouncers, when I was doing my stuff, I was up there, we're all walking around drinking water, I had a few beers, yeah. and, and I was like, why are you guys drinking water? Because we're on steroids, we don't want to hurt our livers. Uh, there you go. Is that good stuff, or what? Well, I mean, they shouldn't be drinking on the job anyway, but... Uh, true, true, yeah. but at the end of the good, night... That, that's a good question, I, I don't want to keep veering off into tangents, but if someone is using... Uh, if they're on a cycle of anadrol or D-ball, some, some oral agent like this, that is hepatoxic, you know, obviously they should avoid alcohol on top of that, but how much more damage would they be doing? Are they, aren't they already doing plenty of damage regardless? We don't know. And the end of our video coming out next week, I talk about it's really not that liver toxic. It runs, 
Yeah, it runs, Anavar is metabolized primarily through the kidneys. Mm. It's a very, and I talked about the, the chemical properties and the reason why. And I didn't even know this. I, even the anabolic doc didn't know this stuff. Okay, so, now the, the Dr. Testosterone, who we're calling Dr. George Trujillo. Yes. So he left a comment under your D-Ball video on your YouTube channel, Anabolic okay. Doc. Uh, he said, methandiana, what was the English nomenclature of it? Another medical link. Anyway, it's his last, last sentence there that I want to challenge you, uh, challenge him, challenge you, because I'm curious if this is true. He says, taken sublingually, it can avoid the first pass through the liver. So wow. Dr. Dr. Trulliatos thinks you can avoid a lot of the liver damage if you stick the, stick the pill under your tongue and let it sit there for five or ten minutes instead of swallowing it. So he, this is such a good question. I can't get – I have two answers. One answer is he's tr it's right. He's correct. Hmm. It bypasses what's called the portal cable system. It bypasses the small bowel effect of what's called the first pass effect. Yeah. So it bypasses food that goes through the small bowel. It comes out of your stomach and everything that's picked up in the capillary bed of the small bowel, the first part and the second part of the duodenum is where everything comes out, amino acids and other you know, food constituents, fats, glucose, so on and so forth, monomers of glucose. They go into the small bowel. They go they shuttle right to the liver. Right. So for the first pass effect, Dr. T is completely right. Hmm. So when you take it sublingually, it, it dissolves into the lymphatics, and there is a steroid, a testosterone derivative, called testosterone undecanate. It's made with an with it's an oral, it's uh, test it's uh, andriol. Yeah, andriol. it's in Europe. We talked about that, yep. and that dissolves through the lymphatics. And I've researched this in my research. I was kind of launching off onto that researching every. I could research for hours, and that does go through the lymphatics. And it repeatedly stays out of the, the portal cable, and therefore, it doesn't affect the liver at all. So, he is correct. But, Dr. T, we both need to consult the services of a board-certified hepatologist who's a liver expert. It's a gastroenterologist who's a specialist in liver only. And we, I wonder... After, if you, when you take D-ball sublingually right. and the initial, the initial effect is definitely not going to go directly into the liver because it's not going, it's going through the lymphatics of the sublingual under the tongue. Okay. So, and we have drugs that do this, but I wonder when it's circulating through the body subsequently, it's going to go through the liver. Right. So, so uh, the bro science there would just lead to the conclusion of, well, I just, I'm cutting my liver damage in half. If I do it this way, I, I, I don't, I want to ask George, Dr. T, we need to ask this and the standard hepatologist is not going to know because he's probably going to go like this because all the doctors that we ask these questions to, they go like this. Yeah. And these are Harvard. These are guys at Harvard. Is this why the anabolic doc had to come into play? Because I research real steroid medical questions with actual real doctors and I ask them the questions and we some things we don't even really know hmm. well here's the thing it's a, a, a D ball is used in a lot of bulking cycles yeah and it's especially used in the first few weeks because if a guy's been off you know it, it sucks being off everyone every gear user hates that period where you have to cruise nobody ever seems to come off at all completely anymore but <laughs> they all hate cruising you tell a guy to, now you got to be on 250 milligrams for 10 to 12 weeks and let your receptors bounce back. All this like, it's like miserable. They're like, so I have friends that the, that's like the worst part of their years. Is wow. All I do is bitch and moan. I'm getting smaller. I'm getting fatter. I'm getting wow. weaker. Oh, I couldn't even get 405 in the squat last night, bro. Wow. Anyway, they're dying to get back on gear, and not only that, they're dying to like get big and strong again. Boom, as fast as possible. Wow. So wow. they'll do their Sipionate, their equipoiser, whatever, they'll do all their long ester shots, but at the same time, they'll immediately start D ball or Anadrol so that they have something that's working right away that they can wow. feel and see within a wow. couple of days. Um, so I guess, I, do, did I even have a question with that? Um, yeah, my question would be I know you're not about designing cycles, although I saw somebody on your, somebody commented they wanted to know if that's part of your consultation services, if you can design <laughs> steroid cycles for people. But, uh, Fortunately, I have so many comments on there. I don't even get. I'm not even even looking at them. 
that's fine. That's fine. I mean, I just, I, I better not, I better not look. There's some good ones. A lot of people will love what you're doing. There's a lot of congratulatory thanks for doing these, but there are some questions people that want more gear, gear of knowledge. But I mean, I guess this is a question more for the drug gurus because it's more bro science. But if you're from a point of view of you know the physiology of how steroids work, does it even you does it even make sense to do that? I mean, if you're if you're injecting cypionate and, and then another another say you're stacking with a decker or an equipoise or something it's going to take a couple weeks for you to really feel what's going on but it's going to happen sooner or later is there any reason in your mind for someone who's trying to be as healthy as possible to use orals at all so i mean there no one no there's no studies on this so if they're trying to be healthy they're using steroids they're they're taking a risk um, it's kind of i mean it's kind of a question of like if you're doing steroids, <clears throat> you're going to be subjecting yourself to some risk. Yeah. How much risk are you taking? If you do one Anavar tablet a day, probably not much risk, but you're not going to get much benefit either. Yeah. So if you step it up and you're doing intermuscular steroids, and most steroid users, you know, do intermuscular steroids, yeah. and they don't do orals. You know that. Right. No, so, and most, most steroid users will do. Like I said, they'll use orals, but they don't use them throughout the whole course of the 12 to 20 weeks of their cycle. They will use it in the introductory phase because they want to they want to get some results back. They want that fullness, that that heaviness. And they, but they use it with intermuscular. So they'll do yes, tap, yes. equipoise, anadrol. Right, right. Like that's like, boy, man, if you if you got anything in you, you're gonna get strong. I mean, that's like whatever your genetics are, whatever your psycho, whatever you're doing, your benching. So, I mean, I'm a powerlifter, so I've been around this for the in the biggest guys in the world underground for decades. You're right. Test and a draw. I interviewed some famous people. I just don't want to say names because some of them are not even alive right now. And you know what they told me they did back? And these are the top powerlifters in the world. You know what they did? Mm. Testosterone and Anavar. Mm. A lot of it. A lot of and you know what? That <laughs> those are that's a combination. Now, Anavar is actually I'm I'm not going to give the secrets. I did a whole video. I did a lot of research for that video, and it's going to be coming out next week. But we we filmed it today, and it's be it's edited, and it's going to be edited, and we put table of contents in the front so people who have no patience can be jumping to. Wow, that's, that's wow. about that was my guys. That was my guys' thought, and we're doing it. That's maybe why we're we're ha we're going viral with all this stuff right now cuz we're we're making it so people can get through the whole thing and then YouTube uh, re re rewards that right. it's all stupid it's all so stupid it's like i do videos that are important but the steroid videos are blowing up the heart videos are doing okay but but so to, so guys are doing steroids if you're doing an oral agent steroid two things happen that can hurt your health <clears throat> it definitely hits goes through the liver and I've definitely seen liver cysts. I've seen transaminase elevations, and I've seen it's called cholestatic disease, where the bilirubin levels are 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 going to go up transiently, which is that's freaking scary and dangerous. And I've seen it. Now, when you stop those agents, it does. I'm not I'm not here to to bullshit you. They, they all go down. I've seen probably. I mean, because I'm the anabolic doc, I have seen probably a dozen cases over 10 years of severe liver disease, including one guy liver cancer, mm. but, but he had hepatitis C. Oh. And, and, and so he, has gonna, he, he can get liver cancer from that. So it's never a clean deal, but liver disease is there. Guys go on and off. The, the worst case I saw was a man from, from Saudi Arabia area from Arab Emirates. Mm. He was living on oral steroids, Terenabol, Turnbull, Terenabol, he did it for like a year and a half. He just didn't, he just scared of needles. Yep. I think it happens more outside the country. And he ended up going to, I think I've told the story. He ended up at Hopkins, John Hopkins, and he had, he had hepatitis pileosis and he had these huge blood filled cysts and they actually had to, they had to get in there and cut them out and drain them. And he was in the ICU for about two weeks. Then he came to me in a limousine because he's, he's, he has a few dollars, you know, he's a, he's a, he's an oil sheik. Okay. And uh, literally, he's a young man, and he was—he loved being on. I mean, call him crazy. He loved steroids. This is mm -hmm. ten years ago, and I never heard from him since. But that was no joke. So he lived on oral steroids for a year and a half. Wow. With poor so, consequences. Hmm. But but it's like but you know to us in America we know not to do it. 
But it seems like to the guys outside America, now we have YouTube. You know, there was no YouTube around 10 years ago, I guess, or it wasn't big. Right. So he, he wasn't watching it, so he didn't know. So the dangerous, you know, if you're going to do oral steroids, guys, keep it down. I mean, like, it's – that's – you you, and then it does debilitate. You know, I'm going to watch my videos for the details, how they work, because right. it does debilitate your cholesterol panel. But if you're young and you have no plaque in the artery, no heart disease, no one seems to give a shit. It's, and if it enlarges your heart and it causes dysfunction to your heart, my usual stuff, LVH, dis, diastolic dysfunction, endothelial dysfunction, you're, you're not going to give a shit when you're 23 or 33, but collectively over years by running a lot of cycles of oral steroids, it's, oral steroids are toxic, Ron. Come on. Now, this was a follow-up question, but you just mentioned this. So under your, in the comments section of your Diana Ball, Breakfast of Champions video, a guy named Bruno Rossini said, can we expect Colostac syndrome with all oral 17 alkylated drugs or more common with Dianabol? No, not with Anivar. And I learned this myself hmm. because the, 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 the change, because of the structure, because of where, the, it's a DHT derivative, right? Anivar is a DHT derivative. Dianabol is a testosterone derivative. Isn't that cool? Yeah. I mean, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm making Bill Llewellyn proud, you know, so a lot of bro science guys are going to be cheering for me right now, yeah. you know, and it's just like, this is real science. So because of those structural changes, got to watch the end of our video, it doesn't go through the liver that much. Hmm. It may, this end of our mediates this meta every drug is metabolized yeah. and when it's metabolizing, it's transforming and it's going into pro hormones, right? It's changing its form. DH testosterone DHT, testosterone aromatization estradiol, right, Ron? Yeah. So your body's doing this in organs, in the capillary base, in the, in the glandular tissue, in the brain. There's conversion all over the body, guys. It's super complicated. This, so anadrol and D-ball are liver toxic, yeah. no question. And other oral steroids, there's many of them, they have different degrees of liver toxicity. Anivar. So the answer to that question is no. And I, I'm just I'm a scientific historical guy. I'm not telling you to do Anivar. I'm just telling you that Anivar is not as liver toxic by any means to uh, despite the, uh, the the transaminase is going up there. You're not going to get damage hist histological damage to the kid to the hepatocyte to the liver to the to that functional liver cell compared to Anadrol or those other but they're all 17 alpha alkylated, yeah. but the alkylation, that methylation or alkylation, ethyl or methyl group, I, some guy was smashing me for the doc, you said yes. the wrong thing. No, dude, no. I even checked it with a chemist. I checked it. 17 alpha alkylation, you could, when you alkylate, it can be done with a methyl or an ethyl group. Boom. Okay. That's organic chemistry. It's 17 carbon. And that's alkylation, 17 alpha alkylation. We say it could be a methyl or an ethyl group. And for the for for on these drugs, I was talking about a, it's a methyl group that's added. Now I'm a science geek, so I mean, and if I'm wrong, let's go. I mean, please, chemist, please correct me. I want to know if I'm wrong on that. I'm not a I'm not a biochemist. I'm a doctor. Well, you know all about the heart. So here's a good another comment from your under let's video, go. which you haven't let's seen. Go. Maybe you did. I don't know. This kid says, uh, I assume he's a kid. Steve Adams said, I tried D-ball once. Four hours later, I started having chest pains inside a gym. I never had chest pains in my life. Have you ever heard of someone taking an oral no, steroid? No, no, no. no the no. heart damage was that? No. Okay. No. I mean, I mean, but but it's but here's the here's the take home message on that, Ron. Yeah. Roid rage is real, guys. Tre it's called trend. Okay. Steroids affect every man. Everyone has a fingerprint. Every man's going to get a different effect, and, and women obviously too. Yeah. But people take steroids. Within four hours, are you going to be? I mean, within four hours, it's going to be in your brain to some degree because it's if, if it's that's the peak of the concentration. That's why D ball is taken what once a day or twice a day, right, Ron? Yeah. So it's like, so so it's like that's going to convert and and go into your brain. And to that man, is he so sensitive? I'm not I'm not joking now. Is that man so sensitive mm -hmm. that he did one pill? And then four hours later, was that a placebo effect or was he real? I mean, or, and then did he feel like he was, a, I don't, there's no, I never argue patients. It's like, okay, that's how you feel. 
but does the science support that that was probably having, did you have a heart attack? No, you, you didn't have a heart attack. But so that's the answer to that is there's no way it doesn't work. I wish some of these things actually did have quicker effects because you know what? That's you wouldn't see people. Yeah. You wouldn't see people abusing them. It's interesting. I've, I've heard a lot of recommendations, bro science recommendations, to, to take your orals, your oral steroids, like thirty, like a pre-workout, thirty minutes before your workout. Yeah. That's they believe that that's going to the drug will be circulating at in definitely at peak, at peak uh, concentration during your workout and give you maximum benefit for for whatever. But, so that act, that actually is true. That does work. Oh yeah. Well, guys, I and this this comes anecdotally. From the powerlifting world, guys do check drops yep. right off the bat, and and they do suspension, you know, in the morning, like in the back room, gearing up and getting ready. And I mean, and they take anadrol in the morning, the liquid drops, and they want they want this three or four or five hours later. They they want this peak. They time it, and there's no studies on this, but don't tell the top strongest men in the world that the check drops. And the D ball liquid, the liquid dropper D ball on Anadrol and the suspension, don't tell them, don't tell me that that's not working for them because they're squatting a thousand pounds raw now. Now, check drops, just to let people know, from what I remember, it's a, it was a veterinary drug. It was a yep. liquid suspension of methyl test, which was yep. the very first, uh, before, long before Dianabol, there was methyl test, I believe. That's right. A very toxic, very crude form of. Liquid testosterone is that? What yeah, it and it's got. Yep, it's a liquid form of. It's an oral form of testosterone. It dissipates within hours. I mean, it's just gone. It, it's not. It's not sustainable. That's why they chem. That's the chemical. It didn't work, but it was used veterinarian. They used it to get bulls like massively crazy and fertile and horny. I I believe or or roosters or animals for for mating. I mean, I'm not kidding. So, reader, I mean, maybe I'll do a video on check drops. I don't know. You had uh, you were in uh, the, the new muscle and fitness that came out with the guy with the kettlebell on the cover. You had something in there. Uh, you were part of one of the articles, but there was an ad in the back. This is I know I'm going off again, but it's 78 year old Latin lover's secret. It was some pill from Italy from a from a uh, you know some plant or something that the, it was basically they claimed it was Viagra. I was just like, oh my god, who would actually. In this day and age, when anybody in their anybody in their grandmother could get a hold of Viagra Cialis easily, why would you why would you spend money on these uh, scurrilous suspicious it things? It's just, yeah, it's just but I but it's but steroids do go into the brain though, Ron. They these guys they get more aggressive. I mean, they, and they focus it though, and they they like the the it's a high. They get high on it. So take home message: these people out there who've never tried D ball, they're going to use steroids anyway. Uh, what would you? You're not going to recommend, obviously, if they use anything. D but if no nope, D ball, if they're going to use steroids, if, would you say D ball is a is a safer option, not a safe option? Stay away. What would you tell? Them? I can't say. I mean, you know, I can't even give. But I mean, D ball is, is harsh. And then in the end, what I see is I see the main side effect. I see is anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism. Right. Yeah. So guys, guys do a, just a little D ball. A little bit again, because they don't. You're right, though. The newbie guy doesn't want to do the injection, so he does the he does the peptide. He does the SARM. Yep. This is what's happening. He does the SARM. He does the pro hormone, and then he does the oral Winstrol, oral Anavar, D ball, or Anadrol, or some ster some combination of orals. And he the first couple cycles, either it, depending on who he is and what it is, and if it wasn't like you said, like gumdrops, yeah. like you first had, either works a little bit or a lot bit, and it's some amazing. Uh, come on, it's some transformation for this man yeah. who's an average guy somewhere in the world, and he he go he gets stronger in the fucking gym. Yeah. I mean, this is like a blessing and a curse. And then what does he do? He goes back for more. Yeah. And then he goes back. Come on, Ron. Look at you today. That's, so, you know, it, th this is that, that's it, the problem, though, Ron. You're going to go back for more. And then when they come off, they, they come. Ron, we got three consults last night online. I have 25 guys. I will get to you guys. I take care of my, my first patients first. And then I take the, the guys. That, I have a waiting list. It's just how it's going to be. It's too bad. 
and and I'm going to hire a doctor sooner or later. But I just don't want to hire anyone right now. I don't want to put up with anyone. Okay. So so get in line. But and I but I'm humble for my patients and my my guys that are there. Guys come to me. They don't give a shit about their heart health. They don't. Guys come to me because they have sexual problems after doing steroids. Hmm. Done. I only get new patients for one. A, I get a small fraction of guys that actually care about their heart, and they're old. They're 35 and 40 and older. I, sh I should say maybe 25 percent. Hmm. Most of my business, Ron, yeah. guys do steroids. They they come on and off, and they go, "Holy shit, this ain't good." Yeah. I can't. I I got problems. Got to go see the anabolic doc, and then that's what I do, Ron. Because well, it's it, 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 it? Rob, but is it true? If you go on, so it turned up, Doc, I did my PCT or I didn't do my PCT, and we can talk for 10 hours on that. Yeah. You know, they, they, they end up coming off everything, and from a little anivar to a little pro-hormone. I mean, the, the, the SARMs are useless, guys. They're just pleased with SARMs. They're useless. Huh. I mean, they're basically useless. Guys, in, in the end of the day, they're not SARMs because it's actually a steroid you're taking if it works. And if it's a SARM, okay, it works a little bit. You're going to end up doing steroids. Okay, please don't. So when you do, you're going to come off. You're going to have that withdrawal syndrome, Ron, and you're going to you're not going to feel like like Superman, and you're not going to have you're not going to be interested in sex, or worse, your sexual function it ain't going to go. And you know what you're going to do? You're going to text your uh, the guy who's told you say, you know what, bro, I need more. And do you need more, Ron? And then you're going to go into the then you're going to start injecting, right, Ron? Oh yeah. You're, and then you're going to feel like a million bucks, and then the problem's solved because you're just going to live on test and blast and cruise forever. Okay, you ready for a fun question that was on that? Oh, I'm ready. This, this was on the D-ball. It has nothing to do with D-ball, but this is such a great question. I had to throw it at you. Okay, so this guy says, I'm really seriously thinking of injecting Humatrope 12 milligram cartridge kit, seven-day pen injection, uh, directly into my penis. I saw it. <laughs> Will that make my penis grow? What's the side effects? What's your guys' thoughts on that? So I guess he was looking for input from everyone that comments your video. But yeah, would injecting growth hormone into your penis, you know, make you a point? That is star? not recommending. That's not recommending. That's off-label use. Yeah, that's not. I've, I've, but Ron, I've heard, I've heard guys do it though. Okay. It doesn't do anything. They get, they can get penile. I mean, I have men, unfortunately, that need to take injections for the penis to get an erection. Right. Have you heard of that? Yeah, Cavaject was the. Yeah, the old. I don't know what they use now, but that was what they used back in the old. It's alprosadil, so it's it's. There's different forms of of that medicine, okay? Yeah. And there's a few different forms, and I prescribe it carefully for some men, and usually they're older men or they have serious erectile dysfunction status post bypass heart surgery or prostate cancer removal, or they just maybe they've used so much steroids over their life, or they have depression or severe erectile dysfunction where the, the, the pills, you know, Cialis and Viagra don't work. I have these, Ron, there's no joking. I'm all joking aside. This is serious stuff. So I prescribe for some men, not many, the Cabraject and different combinations because we have pharmacies that will make it much cheaper and it's, it's very effective. But you're injecting a small insulin syringe of this medicine into the side of your penis, Ron, sure. like, like you'll be doing with, with that uh, human growth hormone. So that, that's really not funny to me. I mean, that guy thinks it's funny. It's like you're well, going to get. I don't get... think he thinks it's funny. I think he's wondering if it will really work. No, I know it's not going to work. It's useless, and you're going to you're going to you're going to damage your penis. Please don't do that, sir. You're going to damage your penis, and you're going to get fibrosis. Mm. So the guy. So and the, then there's there's Peyronie's disease. Mm. There's fibro. I mean, you know, Ron, this is. Don't mess with your penis, guys. Is that what you're saying? Don't mess with. Don't mess with the penis, penis guy. Sticking it, needles in it. <laughs> And if you and, and this is my our warning, if you're gonna if you're gonna enter the world of steroid world and you're gonna cross this line and do orals and then you're gonna cross this line and if you're gonna come into the world, there will be some certainly some feelings of strength and power and euphoria. That's why it's done. And you'll be in the club where you'll be on testosterone forever and ever and ever. You'll never ever come off testosterone, ever. Right. Like I right. say, diabetics, right. diabetics don't ever come off of insulin. Nope. Right. And, and even if, if the early diabetic loses a ton of weight, they could probably come off insulin in the beginning, yeah. depending on who it is. But well, I understand your point. But if, if, you're, if you're 
massive steroid user and you have shut down your pituitary and your hypothalamus and your gonads connection and you lose weight and you try to come off steroids and you try doing every PCT cycle known to man, you're dusted. Yeah. I saw a guy today, I talked to probably six guys today, he's been with me for 10 years. I didn't do labs for him for every, we try doing labs every four to six months. You know, I do it based on what I think is right, based on what's going on. It's always about number one is the right thing for the patient. It's always number one. It's easy. Yeah. What's the right thing to do, to do th for them? Some men don't have good medical insurance, so I don't need to do it every four to six months, but maybe every, every year, every, and that's, that's fine. Yeah. So I did the guy's labs. I didn't do them in about eight months and he stayed away. His testosterone was 66. He's, he's a, how old is this guy? He's 40 something, 45. He's a good looking man, did steroids for a very long time. He came to me 10 years ago when he was in his, I don't know, mid thirties. And he just wanted to have me give him, you know, TRT. And he, I pulled him off testosterone in the beginning. He tanked and I said, you, you're going to need this. And he's like, doc, please. I've been on for 15, 20 years. Just, just keep me on testosterone. So he came off Ron for six months. Hmm. guys do this yeah and he just goes you know what doc i just got tired of it it's there's always some pressure from the family members i think and that pisses me off but hmm. so you just don't stop, need you stop their trt Press yes the so so i saw his number today and i i saw his number last week and i when we were my office calls the guys to set up the reviews you know on the phone or in person he, florida here this is all i do so i look i go dude sir have you seen your testosterone? He goes, yeah, I went back on after that because uh, it was like two weeks ago. Yeah. And I go, what'd you do? He goes, I was off for like six months. I go, why'd you do that? Hmm. And he goes, I just want to see. I go, how'd you feel? He goes, horrible. He thought magically his body was going to regain the ability to produce testosterone again? Right. This is why this show, I don't give a shit if we have 10 guys, one guy or, or, 100, or 10 million guys watching. His brain, he was off for six months. Wow. And his testosterone was 66. I mean, how do you, how can you live like that? Because he must have been exhausted. He must have been Flat. depressed. Flat. No sex. Yeah. You know, and it goes to tell you that, you know, it, it's a guy that you, you wonder, like, is he having sex? Does he care about sex? And, hey, man, that's your life, man. That's that's not my life. <clears throat> right. I'm, I mean, you know, you that's up to you. Doc, do I have to have sex? Holy crap. Are you kidding? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, theoretically, like priests don't have sex. I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's true. I mean, I don't have any priest on gear yet. That would be good, priest on gear. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's actually good for them, right? They should be on gear. Oh, wait, no, they should be off gear and they should have no sex drive. Wait a minute. Uh, I have seen some, some guys that were, uh, nah, I won't call anybody out, but I, I bet there have been guys who were, Studying for the priesthood that we're on. True. Here. I'm not Fine. naming. I'm not going to name names because I don't want anyone to get mad at me. But I've seen. I've, I have seen that. So and that's it, Ron. There's nothing more to. So, so that's you know, if you're if you go on steroids, this is the message of the show. Buyer beware. You're going to be probably on it forever if you cross a certain line. Now you are going to do your next video on Anavar. Is that right? Next video is going to be launched Monday night. Next Monday night. It's Anavar. I won't tell you the full title because it's really cool. It's going to be the history, the pharmacokinetics, the, the incredible manufacturing history. Can I give you a title? Maybe my title's better than what you had in mind. What do you got? Anavar dot dot, not just for chicks. <laughs> yeah? You like that one? You can, you can use that. It's fine. I, I, will, I will reference you. I will reference You'll get some of the royalties. Yours probably. You probably had a better title than that. But it's a their I, basic title. They're basic because the the, the, the thumbnail is very basic. And I that's have, it. I have a feeling that's going to be a great video because that's huge interest in that drug. Huge interest. It Ooh. is. It's it's we sh we I filmed it this morning. It took me like an hour and a half because I had to, I keep cutting them and I have to keep the dogs bark downstairs and the dog. Had, I was coming to the end. Now sometimes I just stop yeah. and my editor just cuts it out. But I'm such a fanatic that I sometimes get up, turn the freaking thing off, and I redo the whole thing. Yeah, I've done that. So I was on the third run to the end, going, "This is great! I'm insane! I'm fired up! I'm getting every my I'm getting every chemical detail. All my thoughts are coming out. It's tight. We're going through. I'm not stuttering too much. 
And then downstairs, the dog, Victor, starts squeaking a ball. Squeak, 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 squeak. <laughs> Freaking dog. I flipped out, ran downstairs, took the ball out of his mouth. Is this that giant poodle? Yes. Oh, okay. That's your buddy. That's, that's the one who goes mountain biking. Yeah, that's my, that's my mountain bike dog. <laughs> All right, doctor. Thank you so much. Diana Ball, the Breakfast of Champions. Go to the doctor's video, uh, video page on YouTube, Anabolic Doc. A lot more science in that video than what you just heard me in the doc because, you know, I, I go off on crazy tangents every 10 seconds and start talking about penises and drugs and sex and rock and roll and all that good stuff. So, <laughs> all good, Rob. Thank you so much, doctor. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, we're going to keep this thing rolling next week. Probably going to talk about Anabar, I'm guessing, because uh, I'm lazy. I'm getting lazier and lazier. Hey. But I, I'll put my, I'll put our own twist on it again. I'll get a lot of things that your video might not have addressed because you're not as much of a meathead, bro, science knucklehead as I am. Ron, you've got a lot of experience, man, in the streets. It's this is incredible stuff for guys to be hearing. Yeah, cool. All right, so that's it, everybody. Make sure to check out the websites: anabolicdoc.com, metabolicdoc.com. For those of you asking, how do I get in touch with the doctor? The websites have contact information on them. You can reach the doctor at the websites. Go to YouTube and check out all his videos on Anabog Doc channel. And that's it. We'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks for watching.